I'm a very firm believer in the idea that schools are for kids. So we need to make sure that we are setting ourselves up to meet the needs of kids first. When I walked into the building, I knew that there was something different. Claudia, our principal, is so very committed to developing teachers to be effective. What really exemplifies leadership at our school is people who are constantly looking to see how can I improve our school program to meet the needs of our kids. I get so frustrated when I go to um, conferences and, and the gatherings of the you know educational big thinkers and so they're so poor they need so much they you know we can't um, there's no way we're solving poverty today can we educate kids who are poor absolutely welcome back everybody it's nice to have you here Thank you. believe it or not we really missed you guys this summer we've been preparing all summer for you We've been doing a lot of thinking about what we're going to do to get you ready for high school, college, and beyond. So I'm hoping that you guys are as ready as our team. We've been in existence for over 20 years. Um, we target kids who are bilingual. This is home room six. I have one more. Thank you. I was a teacher here for a little over eight and a half years. During that time, the founding principal left, and over a four-year period, we had a succession of five different school leaders. It went from a small, safe place to a place that was chaotic. Kids were not learning. We'd spent four years with school leaders who didn't hold anyone accountable for anything. And I am very much about accountability. I partnered up with um, New Leaders for New Schools, was able to get my principal certification, and became the principal. There's no secret recipe. It's just simply, it's hard work. There's a roadmap so that we're not just wishing and hoping and setting a high bar. There's a plan set in place and the goals that we're setting are logical, achievable, and measurable. The first thing we did was institute a school-wide system, which we call the REACH program. R is for respect and responsibility. E is enthusiasm. A for achievement. C is for citizenship. H is for hard work. We work hard every single day. The REACH values are six values that we that are a huge part of our culture as a school. They're tied to the way teachers talk to kids, the way kids talk to teachers, communication between teachers. Creating a common language so that kids have a level of familiarity with the expectations has been really important. REACH is what we are all about. Those are the values that we use to guide every decision that we make here at the school. We're gonna start from day one with REACH, and when you end, guess what we're gonna end with? REACH! All right, day one, you ready? Our kids are coming to us on average with four-year delays and gaps, but ultimately our kids have to be prepared in eighth grade to compete with other kids who have received top-notch educations from K to eight. So let's create our introduction. I'm a big believer that instruction drives student outcomes. So if B is negative, what do I know about the larger factors? They have to be negative. We look for teachers who have a strong belief system that all kids can learn. That's something that we definitely look for when we're hiring. They may not be masters at classroom management. They may not be masters at um, lesson planning yet. But we know that we can support them through that. We're looking for people who are coming to instill a love of learning, who motivate kids, who teach them how to get what they want for their futures. For us, it's more about core values than the skill set they come in with. Just like we believe with kids, we believe that adults can come in and with good support, they can learn. All of the resources that are available to us are really practical, but they also differentiate to meet us where we are. 
Have you done a learning walk before? Um, not. Like I've observed other teachers, but not like as a teacher. Okay. The purpose of a learning walk is to give teachers an opportunity to see other classrooms that they don't necessarily work in, to look for what's working in those classrooms, and also to identify questions they might have so we can build our own practice and support other teachers in building theirs. So next for you is 312, 7th grade math. Caitlin started as a special education teacher and has taken on many different roles, um, learned it very well. Her role has grown because she has, she has grown it herself. I get negative 18 and then I bring everything else down. The way that we measure teacher effectiveness is by measuring what students can do. That's our, that's our bottom line. As soon as you have your whiteboard and your marker, I'd like you to write the problem and your PEM dash checklist. I like how Emily is working. I like how Luis is working. Maria Lasakis is very effective with students, um, very focused on data, using that to inform her instruction and adjust her instruction as she goes. Um, her classroom environment is one of the environments most conducive to student learning. She has had such amazing results in her classroom. We knew we had to find a way to share it out. So I thought you did an excellent job with that. And you also gave individual attention to a lot of students. So we've set her up to be a mentor to our first year teachers and articulate, you know, so what is it you're doing? What are you doing to achieve these gains? Because we want to obviously spread it out. Becoming a school leader and a leader in a school doesn't necessarily mean that you become a principal or an assistant principal. You can be a leader because teachers trust you and they feel comfortable asking you questions. And so redefining what leadership is has been really important. We are in the 95th percentile in the city, um, so we're doing very well in terms of making sure that the time they spend with us is valuable and useful to them. The teachers know what they do each day really makes a difference and that's it's really motivating. It motivates people to come to work and, and to know that, that they matter. It's different from other schools. I didn't think college was important at first I got it. Nobody ever talked to me about that. And now that's one of my goals, to go to college. I don't want to live in no projects. I don't, you know, I want to live in a house. I want to be educated. They don't have to be defined by where they live or who they live with or where they go to high school, that they have options. <laughs> Bye, Mariana. We'll see you. See you tomorrow. Bye, Troy Kelly. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, Seth. Bye. See you guys tomorrow. What we do as a school here gives kids the opportunity to change their future and to change their lives.